It's so true that the internet can indeed be a wonderful place. You can share and look at other people's puppy pictures. You can sit there and have debates with people all around the world about who's the goat this and who's the goat that. You can access a plethora of free porn options available to you at the click of a mouse. These are the things that the internet is for. It can also help bring awareness to causes, raise money for worthy things, it can help people chase their dreams, pursue and achieve lifelong goals. The internet can be wonderful. And unfortunately, as part of that, we all know, it can also be this cesspool of toxicity, of negativity, of hate and trolling and cyberbullying. And unfortunately, that comes with the territory. Unfortunately, that's not going anywhere. It will only get worse as time goes along. And naturally, because we are humans, we are naturally drawn to that negativity. Like flies to the freaking bug zapper. You have everybody around you telling you, don't go towards the bug zapper. <laughs> naturally drawn towards the negativity. You know, we're humans. We're morons. Um, but, you know, in light of some of the recent things that happened, specifically with uh, Hanukkah's uh, untimely suicide, uh, you know, all these wrestlers talking about cyberbullying and the need for the hate to stop and fans chiming in as well. You know, it, it's, it's certainly a timely conversation. And, you know, I look at this and I say, yes, trolling is bad. It can sometimes be harmless, but sometimes it can go too far. Cyberbullying certainly can be bad, but how each individual defines cyberbullying can certainly be different. Um, but... You know, it's, it's not going anywhere. And that's the, the stark reality of it all. So when I see a couple of days after something like that happening and all the outpouring of emotions and support and the determination to be against cyberbullying, 48, 72 hours later, we're right back in that pathetically predictable pattern of behavior that it would come to expect from the wrestling community as a whole. And no, it's not just the podcasters like a JD sitting there talking about making cracks on Alexa Bliss. If anything, it's the wrestlers. Like proving yet again that they are the biggest marks of all. I like, look, I'm not here to defend what he said because it is what it is. It's an off-cuff remark. It's stupid. I've certainly made my share of them. It is whatever. But damn, do we have to get so emotional about everything everybody says? How ironic when dealing with somebody like JD, who indeed gets so emotional about anything that anybody says that is contrary to what he believes. You know, typical bully pulpit type of stuff. You know, it's all good when you are dishing, but you cannot receive yourself. Which should kind of be the ground rules. You should only be able to dish what you can handle yourself. I may sometimes dish a lot, but I can also handle a lot. So... It's not as bad. But after what he said, you see Alexa Bliss responding and talking about him. You see Sonny Deville responding to him and talking about him. Braun Strowman responding and talking about him. You know, and to me, this is a perfect time to remind wrestlers of a very simple model that they should all adhere to. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. How much money do you think you're going to make because you get into it with some internet guy? Bumpkiss. So if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense to do it. If you don't want to feed the cycle of trolling and hate and cyberbullying, the last thing you do is engage in it and especially engage in it in kind. Like in Alexa Bliss. You know, I get it. You probably didn't like what he freaking said. Oh, well. Like, seriously, it's not called for maybe what he said. But damn it, you can't control what other people say. You can control how you adapt to and react to the things that are said. Either toughen up a little bit, adapt to it, find some humor in it, or figure out how to ignore it. If something like that said by some random jamoke that you've never seen unless he's paid to sit there and meet you and take a picture with you at Access 
If that's going to bother you so much, then you've got deeper-seated issues that you need to deal with. And maybe social media isn't the place for you, and maybe professional wrestling isn't either. My good God. Joey Numbers said it so perfectly on Twitter. Like, outside of the Internet and social media, wrestling is as cake as it's ever been, and he's absolutely right. And yet these wrestling clowns, these marks in the business, get more butthurt and more overly sensitive and more emotional about anything that I've ever seen. It's crazy. And the fans do, for that matter. You don't like what I like. I hope you rot in hell. You don't like my favorite wrestler. I hope you get AIDS, the full-blown type, not just the Magic Johnson gets HIV and then it magically is never an issue again type of. Like, this is, this is just crazy. It's scripted entertainment. It doesn't have to be life or death. And again, if something like that being said by somebody that you didn't have to heed, that you didn't have to pay attention to, that you could have very easily just ignored, as so many of you wrestlers do, because you know you've got mute options on Twitter and social media. You've got the block button that so many of you apply so liberally anyways, which is probably part of the problem, because you isolate yourself so damn much for any at all negativity or criticism, that when you do happen to be exposed to any of it, you fly off the freaking handle! All the while... Being another one of those types that's going to rally against harassment and hate and trolling and cyberbullying on the internet, then when you respond, you have to know what comes along with that. And you know what you're doing. You're trying to sit there and give yourself a place of assuredness and know that you're going to unleash your legion of minions to attack them. You can't control what another person says or does. You can certainly control what you do, how you act, what you say, when you say it, how you say it, why you say it, all of these things. That's what you can control. You got Sonya DeVille talking about, I wish I could see this dude. And for what? A couple of days ago, you're boo-hooing about cyberbullying. Now you're sitting there tweeting something that anybody with a logical bone in their body can sit there and rationalize as potentially a physical threat of violence against somebody, knowing, again, the responsibility that comes with the profile and platform that you have, that even if you're just full of shit, you Nazi dating freak, of course you are. You know, as a general rule, I'm descended in my bloodlines from my German ancestry. There were soldiers that fought in World War II. There were certainly Nazis there. That's why my family doesn't talk about it a whole lot. You know what I don't do? Is I don't sit there and try to live According to the ideology, I try to live as counter to it as I possibly can be. You chose to at one point in time, dick one! So sit on it, shut up! But you're going to boo-hoo about cyberbullying and all the while engage in it yourself. What well, they didn't even involve you to begin with. You are a problem, a bigger part of the problem than the original clown statement that you listened to the response to begin with. Especially knowing the dangers of what you recklessly, just flippantly threw out there. Because, just because you might not actually ever act on it, or even if you did, doesn't mean that somebody else wouldn't take that next step. One of your loyal minions, one of your raging marks, and sit there and take that type of action themselves. You can't control what other people say, but you can control what you say. You can control what you do. And... There are consequences to things that you say and do, like Braun Strowman. You're the world champ of WWE, one of the two world champs, you're making seven figs. The hell do you care about some random freaking podcaster on YouTube or the internet? Shut up! Bad enough you think George W. Bush is a hero, my God. You sitting there making seven figures, one of the faces of a company, mind you, at a time of significant decline in interest. No way related to him, right? If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Be bigger than that. Be above that. Be better than that. And especially with the played out lines. Like of all people, Braun Strowman. Like why are you sitting there in those tired, played out things? At least be creative. At least be original. You know, crack on a dude talking about living his mind. You don't know what that dude does. You know, we could just as easily crack on you for looking like you ain't taken a shower in three years, dog. But we don't do that. We should. We could, certainly, easily. But even if we did, who the hell cares? 
Make your money, dude. Shut up. Seriously. If these wrestlers don't like cyberbullying, then don't engage in it yourself and don't make the problem worse based off of your actions and your behaviors. Is it fair that these people can say these types of things and not have necessarily consequences attached to them? No, it's not. But A, you can't necessarily control it, and B, life ain't fair. And if you ain't figured that out by now, then I don't know what the hell else to tell you. So instead of focusing on those unfair elements that you can't control, you have to do the best you can to focus on what you can control. And my suggestion for all of these marks in wrestling is stop being so emotional about every little damn thing. If this type of negativity or hate or trolling or cyberbullying gets to you, learn how to better adapt to it. Learn how to laugh it off. Learn how to, God forbid, ignore it. Get somebody else to run your social media if it's such a big issue. Don't create social media accounts if it's such a big issue. Don't ever read any of the responses to you. It's not that hard. Yes, it shouldn't have to be like that. I completely agree. But again, that's not the point. The point is what you can control. And if you don't like cyberbullying, then don't engage in it yourself. If you don't like cyberbullying, then figure out a way to adjust and adapt or ignore it. Again, that is also not that hard. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. If it's not going to help put more money in your pocketbook, more money in your bank account, more money in your freaking savings, then don't engage in it. It really isn't that hard. But instead, the behavior of these three and so many others is so typical of the hypocrisy that we see throughout professional wrestling. Oh, boo freaking who until it comes to us, then we should be held to a different standard. And we're going to unleash our raging nonsensical marks on everybody. How about everybody just toughen up and grow up a little bit? Is that really that hard? I'm just saying.